All right. Welcome to Quimby CLE. I am your host, Eric Cervone. Today, I am honored to be joined by Lars Daniel. Lars is the co-author of the book, Digital Forensics for Legal Professionals, Understanding Digital Evidence from the Warrant to the Courtroom. He's also the co-author of the book, Digital Forensics, Trial Graphics, Educating the Jury Through Effective Use of Visuals, and his forthcoming book, The Attorney's Field Guide to Digital Forensics, Mobile Phones, will be released later in 2021. Lars has qualified as an expert witness and testified in both state and federal courts. He's qualified as a digital forensics expert, computer forensics expert, cell phone forensics expert, video forensics expert, and photo forensics expert. Lars, the expert, thank you so much for joining me today. Happy to be here. Thanks so much. So we are here to talk about digital forensics, provide just an introduction to what digital forensics is. Can you start with just a definition of this topic and why it's so relevant? Yeah, that's an excellent question. When you think about technology and everything that you create and consume today, it's done with an electronic device. Uh, imagine years ago, you maybe you read the newspaper, maybe you utilized a computer for most of it. Today, we have your phones and your computers, all these devices syncing together, and all that information is stored in places we can access it, including deleted data. So in general, when you think about digital forensics, it's going to be the examination of just about anything that gets electricity and stores data in some fashion. That's going to fall under the umbrella of digital forensics generally. So let's get into what the state of digital forensics currently, it's Anything related to technology, I think it's so tough to keep up with because technology changes so quickly. Even for me, as someone in my early 30s who considers myself relatively tech savvy, it's tough for me to keep up. So I don't know how these courts keep up with it. Can we get into just the pace of technology and, and how this, this whole industry has changed just in, you know, you could even go a decade ago. Yeah, even a decade ago, I've been doing this for a little over 13 years at this point in the uh, evolution of both the tool sets to access the evidence and the evidence itself uh, have, have changed dramatically, to say the least. When you think about the pace of technology and we think about what used to be, uh, it's very different than what we have now. When you think about Years ago, maybe you're playing Oregon Trail on the computer you see on the screen or whatever else in school. I know I was. I, I was to get, playing that too. Trying not to get dysentery, always yep. choosing the doctor, right? Yep. Well, back then, right, you want to share data with someone else. You had to use what we call the sneaker network. You lace up your sneakers, you put it on a floppy, and you run it from one computer to <laughs> another. Uh, now it's not like that. Obviously, we understand that we have a tremendous amount of devices that connect and sync and speak to each other. The goal is hyper connectivity. So you have all your information anywhere you want it at any time. So not only do we have devices interfacing with one another through sensors and cloud data storage and so forth. Uh, we also see the connectivity between people of uh, this network and this information that's created through all these applications such as social media and banking and the rest create a massive amount of data that can be mined for evidentiary value. And let's get into the, the sub-disciplines of digital forensics because you have multiple sub-disciplines, which you would think digital forensics would, would be enough of a sub-discipline in and of itself. But lawyers have to break things down as small as they can, just because I think they just like having outlines that have one A, B, four. Is there any other reason to break this down into even deeper subdisciplines than just digital forensics? Yeah, because it's really complicated. Uh, digital forensics we utilize as a umbrella term. Uh, originally, you would have heard this called computer forensics when all the evidence examined primarily was computers. Uh, I got to kind of grow up through the age of the mobile phone revolution where we saw uh, phones become the primary source of evidence. Uh, but digital forensics is an umbrella term. There's simply too many types of data to be examined and devices and information for one person to have it all in their head. Uh, at our lab, for example, we specialize our experts in a handful of sub-disciplines. No one does all of them uh, because it would be impossible to keep up. So if you're an attorney and you feel bad about keeping up, we have full-time experts who do this and we specialize them in a subset of sub-disciplines. And what are those sub-disciplines? Yeah, that's a great question. So first of all, would be computer forensics. That's the oldest of these disciplines. This is going to be the examinations of computers, of servers like you might have at a business, external storage devices such as thumb drives, external hard drives, 
your cloud data that's going to be connected that you would access through a computer, through a mobile phone or other device that would fall under computer forensics generally, and other types of archive data. Uh, some of that archive data is actually one of the most challenging where you have to pull a data back from 20 years ago that's on a tape drive or something like that. Uh, but all that falls under the discipline of computer forensics. Thank <laughs> you.